Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to this week in the dunya and what an eventful week it's been. You've got the coup in Venezuela to talk about, we have Tommy Robinson running for elections, you've got the shooting in a synagogue, anti-semitic cartoons and of course racism all the way up to the monarchy. Let's just get started yeah. <laughs> Let's start off with the philosopher, the great one himself, Tommy Robinson. This classic guy the taxi? Um, taxi. Uh, little <laughs> drives car. is running for what is it European election, MEP yeah? And he's doing it in Manchester. That's random. Why is he running all the way up there? Well he's doing it because over there it's easier for him to get the votes because 2009 to 2014 the BNP won some seats there so they're hoping because he's ex-BNP as well he's hoping to do the same thing. Now as we know Tommy Robinson is a walking comedy show mate. Move over because me coming through and this is what me and we're gonna do I'm gonna punch you in the head I kick you in the face because I am the king of the whole Islam race! And his electoral campaign electoral is no different. He's running in Manchester but his first speech that he was giving was outside Manchester. The land that he was actually on, the owners of the land didn't really give him permission to use the land. And then on top of that he starts handing out free food. Now according to the electoral law electoral you're not allowed to give free food because it counts as bribing. But that didn't stop Tommy from handing out free burgers. He's clearly not serious is he? And then what smashes it even more he's going somewhere he sees a player from one of these football teams. He takes a picture one of his mates puts up in the caption oh yeah this guy sports Tommy as well. Now when this guy actually found out he didn't know who Tommy was. When he found out who he was he's like Ooh. Nah mate, I'm disassociating myself from this guy. I don't know who he is. Absolute classic. <laughs> now this is a, a few things that I came across literally in the first week of his campaign. Now let's move on to the coup. Not the sound that the pigeons make guys, yeah grow up yeah. Coup is when the people overthrow the government. There was another coup in Venezuela. The reason I say another coup because there was a coup that happened in 2002 of a previous leader called Hugo Chavez. The guy who was elected by the people, his name is Nicolas Maduro. Elections happened so the leader of the opposition said Nah mate he's lying, I'm actually the president. And America goes Yeah we like him, yeah he's the president. He wasn't really elected properly but he's got the backing of the US and naturally because the US has allies around Venezuela as well you got Brazil, Chile etc etc they joined in with the US as well. Now this reached to a bubbling point yeah and then this guy Juan Guaido staged a coup with the help of the US and the surrounding countries as well. Now why does the UK hate Maduro so much? Well if I tell you the reasons guys then you're probably going to think why hasn't the guy been shot already? Is President Trump a white supremacist? Lo es. Do you really think that Klu Klux Klan are ruling America? Pienso que el sector extremista de los supremacistas blancos del Klu Klux Klan dirigen los Estados Unidos. Dígale no a la intervención, dígale fuera las manos de Estados Unidos de Venezuela. This guy has got a very socialist slash communist worldview. He received guidance from Fidel Castro's communist party who the US absolutely hate. He was close to the ex-president Hugo Chavez and he's close to Russia and Turkey as well. So what the US did was they put economic sanctions on Venezuela. Now that doesn't really do anything to the leaders but it affects the population to such a degree. Since 2017 40,000 deaths have occurred because of these sanctions and you're not going to hear about this in the mainstream media. Venezuela has the largest oil reserves on the planet. If their leaders democratically elected let them handle their business, stop interfering. For 
God's sake. Since World War II, the US has tried to overthrow over 50 governments, mostly democratic. They've attempted to assassinate over 50 foreign leaders. They've interfered in the democratic elections of 30 countries and they've dropped bombs in 30 countries as well. All of this is referenced in a book called Killing Hope by William Blum, a very brilliant book. Don't get sucked into this sort of stuff guys and start thinking yeah you know what maybe it does need to happen. Nah it doesn't need to happen. Alright let's move on to the next bit of news and this is the shooting that took place in a synagogue. Ironically the shooter tried to copy what the New Zealand shooter did in the mosque. So what he did was he tried to set up his Facebook, he had a manifesto online, he posted the same nonsense on the same website as the New Zealand guy, he had you know that automatic rifle, he went there, he shot one person injuring three and then his gun jammed. Because of that obviously he didn't want to get caught so he legged it. Now what do we learn from this? We learn that hate does not discriminate. Say it with me now. Hate does not discriminate. It needs to be stopped no matter who the victims. You can't just say yeah it's that group, yeah I'm not really affiliated with that group because tomorrow the hate is going to spread like a cancer and eventually it's going to engulf you. In the last 12 years in the US if you look at all the terror related attacks 70% of them were done by white supremacists. But Donald Trump just doesn't want to accept this. Alright guys that moves me on to the next point, racism. Now I came across this article, brilliant article, I recommend you guys to read it, I'll put the link in the description. It says in, in 1960s MI5 believed black people were security risk. You might think alright mate whoop de doo that's all in the past. If you look at the statistics there's no ethnic person in MI5 or MI6. So is it in the past? And on top of that the racism in football again still continuing unfortunately to such a degree that even a member of the royal family Meghan Markle who has married Prince Harry even she's receiving racist slurs online as well. I mean 21st century guys so we moved past this. And finally last but not least there was an anti-semitic cartoon done in the New York Times. I know what you guys are thinking, oh let's get ready for the uproar. Jews are taking over. It's freedom of speech baby. Semitic law will take over Europe and engulf us. You'll be glad to know there was none of that. In fact the New York Times offered an apology. No one said it affected their freedom of speech and you know what that's brilliant because it shows the distinction between freedom of speech and hate speech. Why can't we also apply this to Islamophobia? Surely we shouldn't be displaying hypocrisy. And all the best for Ramadan guys, don't forget to remember me in your duas and stay tuned to This Week in the Dunya and until next time guys, Salamu Alaikum.